Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is uh, just whatever's on the mind of Garfield County. We've been so far we've been talking about the Grand Staircase monument and the impact that the monumental impact it's had on the county. Leland, before the break, I, I set you up for a question about the impact of tourism. Your businesses depend on that, uh, I, I believe, to a certain extent. Well, you know, Chad, I'm glad you brought made that point of tourism. And I have been in the tourism industry now, own my own business for 27 years, so I'm probably a pretty good indicator of what it takes to have good, healthy tourism in an area. And one of the one of the issues that we deal with as commissioners, with the grant in regards to the Grand Staircase, is inaccessibility, which means uh, a lot of that monument you cannot access unless you have a specific vehicle. And 95 percent of the traveling public is in a two-wheel drive vehicle. Most of them are Europeans. So a lot of that monument, it's not because they don't want to see the monument. They want to see it, but they can't. And that is something that we're going to have to deal with uh, going forward that some of the government agencies, such as BLM, really don't want to deal with. They claim that the monument is there for science. It's created for science-based purposes. Uh, I was led to believe that monument was created for tourism. The Antiquities Act actually says that uh, it was the Antiquities Act is there to protect objects of antiquity. And uh, that's always been a contention, a uh, sore spot with me, that they used the Antiquities Act to authorize the president to uh, create the Grand Staircase because I've read the Antiquities Act a number of times and there's nothing in the Antiquities Act, I'm not a lawyer, but there was nothing that I could see that would give a person the authority. I'd like to see it challenged sometime, but I find nothing in there that would give a, a president the authority to create a 1.9 million acre when, when it's set up to protect objects. And it also says in the Antiquities Act that the area shall, shall not be larger than necessary to protect the object to be protected. So that's, that's kind of a sore spot, that Antiquities Act. We are, we are home to uh, three national parks, Bryce Canyon, Capitol Reef, and Canyonlands. And also we have the uh, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area in Garfield County, plus the Grand Staircase and two state parks. So we have, uh, we have a lot to offer for tourists in Garfield County and we're, uh, we're proud of what we have and uh, we, uh, we do depend a lot on tourism. We're, we're proud of what we have for the people to come and visit with us. You know, he made a good point and I think we, take, we get the knock a lot of times that we are anti-tourism, which we're not. We, we go out and try to promote tourism. We welcome tourism. The problem is, is uh, the, 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 the wilderness groups and special interest groups, their definition of tourism doesn't meet the criteria of the normal tourist industry, which means if, uh, for example, on the Grand Staircase, back to the Grand Staircase, if you want to see a lot of that uh, monument, you have to put on a backpack and hike uh, as much as 50 miles. How much of your transportation system did Garfield County lose with the monument? I mean, how many roads have they closed? I'll let the commissioner. I'm not, uh, I'm not hardly prepared to answer that either. I, I, I can't remember. I'm not but sure. But it did They'll, happen. We lost some, yes. Yeah. And we would lose a lot more if we, see, we're fighting to keep those roads we're, open. We're working right now with the, with the state to, to uh, lay claim under RS-2477 law that you know about and uh, so we're working with with the state in order to uh, prevent the closure of those roads so we it's it's been a fight the roads that aren't even technically closed uh does the new layer of of management with the monument uh impede maintenance of some of the roads that you have out there already it's got a lot better it was but it's got the, it's getting better it, it is well, let me ask you this question, because you've kind of got a handle on tourism, which is, again, where, where supposedly all these designations are supposed to be helping. 
at the expense of any of the mineral monies that you might have lost uh, with Andalex and the gas and all these other things that have presented themselves. Um, have you noticed a difference since the monument was created? I mean, you, would, you had owned your business for a, a short period of time before that came along. Well, let me articulate in two parts of your question. In, in the first part of that, when you uh, discuss minerals, tourism will never replace the value of, of minerals and, and natural resources. Uh, that, that is gone forever, and you cannot put a dollar value on what we've lost. There's 300 billion tons of coal alone locked up in that national monument. So uh, in regards to answer, answering that part of the question, I'd say that in, in comparatively speaking, tourist jobs do not replace your uh, industry-driven mining jobs, mm -hmm. uh, that type of job. How about forestry? Because some people will argue, I mean, when we had a guest on a show uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about this issue, and Claire was there. Um, we were talking about the fact that you have boom or bust. In other words, if, even though you have 300 billion uh, tons of, of low sulfur coal, and you can get them out in a 40-acre portal, it's going to eventually run out. And then when it runs out, then your economy falls off. Uh, but there are also sustainable energy or, or industries that are also precluded. Uh, I was thinking in terms of logging and, and, well, and, and, and grazing and some yeah. of the other things. And that, and that brings up another good point. You can have both. You know, the, the industry standards now uh, allow you to, do, to have both. They're very careful when they mine, mm -hmm. uh, simply put. And back to the Forest Service question. Uh, when the Forest Service was managing the, the forest correctly, those jobs would have gone on into perpetuity. That, the, the Kayabab National Forest, for one, that, that they were doing a wonderful job with that forest. They were thinning it as needed, and those jobs would have gone on. They, they wouldn't have logged the forest out that many people were led to believe. We'd certainly like to take a chance on that boom or bust. <laughs> we'd, we'd love to take that boom for a while and then take our, take our chances with the bust. But right. in, in reference to what Leland said about the Kaibab National Forest, I was hauling logs off the Kaibab National Forest back in the early 50s. And uh, I was out to load her one day, and the forest supervisor was there along with our uh, woods manager, uh, woods foreman. And they were talking about the, the timber that was on the, on the forest. And at that time, Kaibab Lumber Company was cutting 60 million board feet a year. And they were talking, and they said at that time, cutting at that rate, they could cut there forever. They'd never run out of timber. So they've gone now from 60 million board feet a year down to zero. And that's what has happened to the economy of... Uh, of our area, there were a lot of people who was affected in Garfield County and especially Kane and Coconino County, Arizona, and Kane County, our neighbor to the south. So it, uh, that's what has happened as far as where we've gone. Well, and, and back to you to answer the second part of your question, has, has it increased tourism? Has, has that monument increased the amount of tourism in my business or Garfield County? And that is a question that, that it really is irrelevant. We're going to uh, uh, push tourism as hard as we can push it. We're going to develop it. We're not anti-tourism. But the, the, the problem, and the reason I say it's irrelevant right now, we need help from the BLM. The BLM's got to step up to the plate and help us in regards to tourism because of access issues, development issues. Most of the traveling public cannot access that monument. so. Basically, we would like to see what it would do as in regards to tourism. Escalante, for example, uh, that is a small community in the eastern part of the county. Uh, the, the school enrollment 7th through 12th grade is down to 70 children. They have a, a, one, of the, one of the businesses, another business is, is closing because the economy is so bad there. We want to help that area. But to do that, we have to be allowed to develop the hole in the rock road, which we are now fighting with the BLM to develop. Hmm. Uh, this is a great topic. 
We'd like to continue. We've got to take a break right now. We'll be back with more of the county seat. Our conversation with Garfield County, the impacts the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument has had on their county. We're talking with their three county commissioners. We will be right back in just a minute. I think renewable energy and wind farms is a good way to go. We have a lot of land here to do that with, and the opportunity will grow as time goes on. If a person wants to work in Beaver County right now, they can find a job. I can't think of a better legacy that I could have left for my town. Take a look, take a glimpse, take a peek. You'll be surprised by what you find. Check us out at DesertPcomplex.com. Our phone number is 435-843-4020. Adventure, beauty, excitement. Tooele County Parks and Recreation. Bringing communities together. How would you spend an extra day in Utah Valley? Stay one more day. Visit utahvalley.com to make reservations. Utah Valley, bring everyone together. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. <laughs> 